going on? Go video. Hope y'all doing well through these uh, crazy days in crazy land. Um, we're just going to go through a couple sold items. I haven't done a sold video in mm, a couple weeks. So I'm going to pick through some orders and show you a couple items. Um, I do have a bunch of items that it should be listing right now. And it's probably about that time to start sorting through um, rather than listing uh, collectibles and yada 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 stuff like that might have to turn to listing butcher knives steak knives hatchets and uh, cb radios flashlights and uh batteries this is going to be the next stage i guess you know it's going to be one of those crazy years <laughs> i guess you gotta pick and choose what you're gonna list um i'm never one to pick and choose what i want to list but this will be the year to uh pick and choose what you should be listing so, I'm going to touch my face and wipe my nose, and then uh, wipe it on you guys, and then uh, we'll carry on. <laughs> um, so, yeah, some sold items. Here we go. Ready? All right. All right. I'm going to try and pull these out, because I got this one here. It's like the first item that needs to get sold. Oh, it is sold. Here's the other one that I picked out of the same lot. Oh yeah, perfect. Heater time, perfect timing. All right, so we got this Dope Key uh, Barber, Garber Green, Barber Green, Dope Key Toys. I believe this is a Dope Key. Yep, Dope Key. Uh, I was a little concerned that this might've been a repop. Um, this is not a repop. This is legit. Uh, so, yeah, we got it out of, um, a clean-out we did, and just, this is, uh, pure profit at this point, so, uh, this is sold. Alright, this is a 50s era toy, so, kind of want to look out for this kind of stuff, and this is made of all steel, and it's a little more quality than an Erector set. It's like a high-end Erector set with no holes in it. Basically, this thing, this thing works. This whole thing works. You could actually move sand with this if you wanted to. Um, yeah, pretty cool toy. Um, on the next, on the next, on the next. Here we go. All right, next we got this leech racquetball can with uh, two balls in it. It was originally $2.49 at JCPenney. This is a shelf display as the balls in here are probably not good. It is uh, sealed, but this does have a shelf life of, uh, I think, only like two or three years. Um, but, yeah, basic display for a uh, um, racquetball display, I guess. On to the next. On to the next. <laughs> it's sold. Yeah, right there. On to the next, on to the next, on to the next. I don't know why I did that one. Alright, go video. Uh, we got some uh, airplane parts. These are all airplane parts. I bought this in a small lot for like $2. Yeah, probably like a year or two ago. This has been listed a while. This has been on eBay for... Um, Two years, right? And the um, reason why is because these parts right here, these parts are the clips that they kind of use to bolt and fasten the sheet metal. So you could technically build a very small plane to fly out of here. So, that's sold. Right there, sold price. Um, I had it listed when I first listed it at 400 because that's probably what it is worth. Um, but, two years, I kept dropping that price down, and uh, I had it listed at 250 before I ended up taking an offer on it, and the guy was kind of building some things for some vets 
down at like some, I don't know, Polish club or something. I don't know. And um, he was just building stuff, crafting, crafting stuff at the uh, Polish club with his buddies. So here's some crafting pots for these guys. We can all uh, go hang out and uh, have their uh, social gathering of like 10 people and build a airplane to fly out of here. All right, on to the, on to the next. All right, here we go. We got this uh, Jacobs 22BA drill chuck. A small little drill chuck. Uh, don't let any stone go unturned. Um, this was probably listed for about a year. Uh, made some money. I, you know, made some money. This is from the Machina slot, 2018. So maybe even a... No, I got this at the end of 2018. So almost a year and a half for this little guy here. Yeah, moving some stuff out of that lot sold that was from this same lot right there you got the puppies doing a little bark action going on There's something going on up there let me go check it out all right guys here we go it's the next item say burn and sharp number one measures in 30 second 30 seconds with a lock micrometer with a lock um, double carbide tip uh, works good, rust free, nice, nice. Comes with the box and the tools for it and some paperwork. So, nice clean micrometer going out. It's a zero calibration. Zero calibration by Sal in 97. So, sold. Alright, there's another... There's another item going out. So apparently somebody wants to do some uh, mill work and while they got their uh, time off, I see. I see, I see. Let's see how it goes. All right. On to the next. On to the next. On to the next. All right, next is a digital horizontal readout machine. It's technically a ruler that reads digitally. Uh, it takes batteries for a bench, uh, do bench, bench work, measurements, measures in inches and millimeters, uh, nice little, nice little piece, let's just check if she uh, turns on here, oh yeah, perfect, all right, so we got that going out, sold, all right, and then uh, on to the next. Next we have this little level, it's a line level, this is more like a, um, I'll put the picture right there, this is more for um, stone work, alright, doing stone work, you want to do some stone work, you need one of these, or uh, it ain't going to go well, alright, nice little level, sold, on to the next. Next, we have this uh, Star It Last Word Reader. Um, There's a little protected um, reader there. That's If you strike that, that would make this gauge move. Hooks up to a, a machinist stand where you can read milling milling numbers I guess you could say it's a milling tool for machinist making parts parts maker tool for making parts um, yeah nice little nice little piece always look for that star it star it alrighty on to the next alright here we go with the last item of the uh, weekend my sales just started kicking back in, and we're probably going to go video after I show you this. And I'm going to pull this out, show it to you, and we'll just do a little more talking. Um, so yeah, sales not too well through February. I know we're into March, and shouldn't really be talking about February, because February is in the past. And now we're into March, and we're moving forward into the future. 
So, I know it's a lot, but I do want to show you my past for February because uh, the store tanked and I didn't list anything for 30 days, um, if not a little longer. And I want you guys to uh, see actually how the store did. So, if you want to see how the store did and hear a little talk about, about that, then stick around after these uh, this last sold item, all right? This last sold item is a great sale. Um, I'll spend three minutes on this, all right? So, I can't really stress this enough, but some vintage uh, computer stuff, it sells for really good money. You have to know what to look for. Um, and when I buy most of it, I just try to pay pennies on the dollar, sift through the good, uh, scrap the bad, and try to just move on. Um, I know it's kind of hard where, bum, 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 you know, it's a bunch of stuff, you know, and it, uh, I'm a collector, so I just collect it anyway. And, uh, so... I just want to stress uh, vintage computer parts uh, a little bit more, where, look them up, alright? It, it, it takes some time, look them up. If it's worth some money, keep it on the back burner if you can't list. But if it's worth money, keep it on the back burner. Don't just throw it away, alright? So I'm going to open this up and then uh, show you what it is, since I probably suspensed you that long. We'll be back. All right, go video. So here we are, we're back, last sale. Did you think that's what it was? All right, good. <laughs> good guesstimate. That is what it was. So this is a 501 or 5001 WordPerfect 5.1. All right, let me call it a WordPerfect, all right? Uh, yeah, it was a little dirty. I cleaned it up a little bit. And this is sold as parts, untested. We're just going to call it broken. Um, I don't know if it works. And it doesn't matter if it works or not. Sold as parts, broken. Alright. So, the reason why you need to look out for this stuff, because if it was, was working, worth way more, alright? Or if I could test it. I can't test it. I don't own the computer for it. And this is the dongle it takes. I don't know what that goes to. Alright. So. Here's the sold price for it. Alright. So you always want to look up them keyboards. You don't want to just go and smash them off your leg real fast or anything like that. You know. It's always good to just take a little, little... Little, little dive in, alright? So here's what you're going to be looking for. If you ever see that 5001 in the left-hand corner, alright? 5001 left-hand corner, then you know you have a word perfect. Then you know you at least got a hundred bucks, alright? There's a nice bolo for you guys, alright? Be on the lookout for that stuff. Stuff's uh, crazy money. And... The last one that sold actually was twenty dollars less than mine. So let me put that in. Let me put that in. It's a uh, high demand where there's not a lot of these. So you know that's my sold. I think you could sell yours a little bit more than mine. I think you could step that up a little bit, and then if you could get it tested working, I think you're at two fifty three hundred on one of these puppies. All right. So keep that in mind. All right, let's go into the talking. All right, here we are into some of the uh, conversations. Story time. Story time? You guys like story time, right? Of course you do. All right, this one's going to be brought to you by uh, Starbucks Espresso. All right, I don't have a can to show you, but it's an espresso and cream. The technique to this is to drop an ice cube at the bottom and then you pour it on top and you wait a minute. Golden, all right? You sip it, you don't chug it, all right? It's good. So, let's 
story time. Story time pertains about crappy sales in February. All right, crappy sales in February. All right. The reason why I had crappy sales in February, I didn't list anything. So I just was going through a revamp within January, pulling items, delisting. We had 700 items listed in January. I delisted about 100. Out of those 100, I made the determine whether or not <coughs> they were worthy or not to list again. So I pulled those out of the um, inventory. Then I had about 600. So within that 600, it, it's all slow moving stuff. It's all knickknacks and uh, you guys see what I'm selling. It's not nothing in high demand where it moves fast or has any rotation at all. Um, so obviously my sales would be slow because of you know economic times and hardships and uh, winter time. Uh, people getting back into the groove of working. We got this uh, coronas, the, the coronas, and uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting that um, I still pulled some sales through, as you can see. I, you know, I squeak, I squeaked them out. I squeaked them out. I did a lot of um, people that were watching. I sent out offers. I did. The whole store almost ran on offers for a whole month um, while listing nothing. Um, I didn't revamp anything, no revamping. I didn't, um, I did nothing. Just nothing. I just pushed my orders out. Pushing your orders out is usually pretty good. You can load your tracking in time, yada yada. And uh, positive feedback. Again, my store runs on positive feedback. If I can get feedback out of the customer, uh, it's, I'm gonna get a sale. I get a sale every time I get a feedback, so um, if I could manage to get that feedback, I would get the sale. That's just how my store's algorithm runs. I've been watching it for a year and a half, almost, like literally watching it. And uh, that's, how, that's how it's been running. That's my, that's my determination of that. And so, yeah, I, I just wanted to let you guys know that you can still make money while not doing anything. Um, is it the smartest move? No, <laughs> no, it's not. All right. Um, we're building a house here, so no time you can either build a house or you can list. All right. Um, meanwhile, everything that I'm listing, makes the money in return to build the house. So we're trying to build the house at zero cost, all right? Uh, by rotating items fully, we'll generate money and it... <laughs> so doing the rotation of the money, we'll uh, build the house. Um, I did this with the PlayStation 4 a lot as I was buying, as I was flipping games, I was buying games and built a huge collection, sold the collection off in one shot, boom, 10 grand in my pocket. Rather than grinding out one item at a time and then trying to save it, I did the, I did the same thing by trying to get it in one sale where then I would have a large amount of capital and revamp from there. Was a technique to it. Um, I didn't really plan on that. I planned on doing it longer, collecting it, collecting the games longer. But it just didn't go that way, so, which is fine because uh, you know, I mean, I have all this inventory. I've been making really great purchases, and we've been finding some really great stuff. Um, it's another item that we uh, we got. Might uh, do a video on this. I have it. I just didn't uh, post it yet. But it's a Stanley number ten that I found. Well, I didn't find it. I bought it off a guy. And uh, yeah, nice number ten carriage maker. Figured I'd show you that one. That's a nice piece. And a 
Thanks to the Japanese planer. All right. Show you something while we were doing the ranting. Um, so. Crazy times. So I just wanted to let you know that you don't have to overly work your eBay store um, to have sales or you, to even have an eBay store. Or is it even worth it to have an eBay store if I don't list anything? Or um, do I list 100 items and let them just sit there? And yada yada. Those questions, you know, the questions. Um, I don't get questions, but I'm sure they are questions. Yeah, it's always worth it. All right. If you want to list, you want to list steady. It's uh, the, the smart thing to do. And uh, yeah, hopefully I sufficed something of what I wanted to say in that segment. And uh, keep picking. Uh, I don't know what to say about any of this stuff. I want to offload at the flea, and we just got a ban on restaurants right now, so uh, no, nobody can go into a restaurant and eat. You can only order takeout now, so this is kind of like where it's going, where the flea market is almost non-existent now, and now I need to just revamp my whole thought process, because through February I was listing nothing because I'm like, well, I'm just going to hoard it and bring it to the flea market you've been watching my videos that was kind of the plan now we're gonna at least have a month before I can get to the flea again now because it was right around the corner April 5th is when they open it's just right around the corner and uh, I don't think it's gonna happen I really don't think it's gonna happen I have my fingers crossed that it would but I just don't think I don't think it's gonna happen and um, it is what it is. So, all right. Good chatting. Hope you're all doing well and uh, keep picking. Bye, bye, bye. Listless list. Do that, do that, do that. Peace.